What happened to Grand Funk Railroad? With the release of the album On Time in 1969, the band made their music debut. Capitol Records signed Grand Funk Railroad. The Beatles record company, like many other famous rock and roll bands, was proficient at marketing their acts. The song Time Machine was the debut single from the On Time album. The album achieved gold status very fast. Even though there were just three musicians on the album, they produced a rock and roll orchestra-like sound. Mark Farner sang his heart out while playing the piano and guitar, Don Brewer is amazing on the drums, and Mel played bass. Grand Funk Railroad's second album, just titled Grand Funk, was also released in 1969. The amazing three of Mark Farner, Mel Shocker, and Don Brewer released two excellent albums in 1969 before releasing the outstanding album Closer to the Home in 1970. I'm Your Captain slash Closer to Home, the album's epic 10-piece concluding track was included. It would go on to rank among fans' favorite songs by Grand Funk Railroad. Grand Funk Railroad issued three albums between 1969 and 1970, all of which were immediately certified gold. The albums didn't have any significant top 10 hits, though. The albums were simply jam-packed with fierce rock and roll melodies, amazing playing and vocals, and just terrific songs that people went absolutely crazy over. Grand Funk Railroad rocked the world of true rock and roll lovers who instantly recognized the real stuff. Grand Funk Railroad issued the album Survival in 1971. The survival theme came about since the three musicians were shown on the album cover as dressed up cavemen. Two amazing cover songs were on the album. The Rolling Stones' Gimme Shelter and Dave Mason's classic song Feeling Alright were both covered by the group. The final song on each side of the album was a cover song. Grand Funk Railroad's decision to cover songs that were at the height of their popularity at the time with Gimme Shelter and Feeling Alright was impressive. Despite the fact that these songs weren't particularly old, Grand Funk Railroad believed they could give them their own unique spin, which they did. Grand Funk Railroad released their fifth album, E Pluribus Funk, later that year in 1971. The band became one of the most well-known rock and roll bands in the world after releasing five albums in just three years. They were so well-liked that they actually outsold the Beatles in terms of ticket sales for their Queens, New York Shea Stadium show. They displayed it on the record's back cover as evidence of their pride in the accomplishment. The Beatles were the best at everything back then. Grand Funk Railroad achieved a minor triumph of its own. Grand Funk Railroad took over when the Beatles left the scene in 1971 because they broke up. Grand Funk Railroad and Elton John ruled the radio in the early 1970s. Grand Funk Railroad and Elton John both did a fantastic job of stepping in after the Beatles split up. The band's foot stomp in music was a standout track on their fifth album, E Pluribus Funk. Foot stomp in music was a wonderful concert opening if there was ever one and Grand Funk Railroad used it as the show opener for many years. At this point, Grand Funk Railroad had released five albums in just three years. Grand Funk produced six albums in just over two years, which is astonishing. After the live album, there came Survival and E Pluribus Funk. That, along with sold-out tours, ought to have brought the band a ton of money and a lavish lifestyle. However, this was untrue. They had reached their lowest point by the time E Pluribus Funk was being recorded. They sat down with Knight. The band abruptly learned they were receiving pitiful royalties and had also lost a sizable sum of money on poor investments. There was a fight between Knight and Mel when additional grudges about Knight's producing skills came to light. The censorship of Farner's political views developed into a significant grievance. The press suddenly became interested as the jabs started to fly in the open space. Grand Funk made the decision to leave immediately and started legal proceedings. Knight then countersued Grand Funk for breach of contract for $57 million. Ironically, the band would not have been bound by Knight's contract if they had waited three months to act. Knight also retained publishing rights to the band's previously recorded songs, while selling them back the right to use the Grand Funk moniker. 
Grand Funk Railroad 6 album Phoenix was released in 1972. Grand Funk Railroad record Terry Knight did not produce. Due to Craig Foss joining the group, the Phoenix album marked a turning point in Grand Funk Railroad's history. Grand Funk Railroad was no longer a power trio for the first time. The group issued the album We're an American Band in 1973. Rock and roll enthusiasts had already given Grand Funk Railroad an incredibly devoted following. Grand Funk Railroad, however, became a household name and one of the largest bands in the world after the release of the album We're an American Band. The number one single on the Billboard Hot 100 We're an American Band was included on the album. Todd Rundgren, a multi-talented individual, produced the album. The year after their hugely popular We're an American Band record in 1974, Grand Funk Railroad released their eighth album, Shinin' On. Grand Funk Railroad once more astounded audiences with another number one single. The cover rendition of Carol King's The Local Motion by Grand Funk Railroad peaked at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 in 1974. It was enormous. Todd Rundgren once more played guitar and contributed some vocals to the album in addition to producing it. The year of Grand Funk was 1974. Grand Funk Railroad was the biggest band in 1974. In the same year, the band released their All the Girls in the World Beware album as a follow-up to Shinin' On. The group added two more massive hits to the disc. The title of the debut single was Some Kind of Wonderful. John Elson wrote a cover version of it in 1967. On the Billboard Hot 100, the song peaked at number 3. Bad Time, the group's subsequent chart-topping song from the album, was written by Mark Farner. The song made it all the way to Billboard's number 4 spot. Grand Funk Railroad was able to get three of their tracks in the top five on the Billboard Hot 100 in 1974. Grand Funk Railroad issued the two-disc live album Caught in the Act in 1975. A terrific rendition of foot stomping music that was to die for was on the album. The album effectively captured the Grand Funk sound. Anyone who had seen Grand Funk perform live was aware of how thrilling the group was live. Con the Act was a fantastic example of their live performances. The smash single Bad Time by Grand Funk was the group's final single to reach the Billboard Top 40. Their subsequent album Born to Die was a little darker than their earlier releases. The record featured a more mature sound with the occasional lovely pop tune sprinkled in like Sally, for example, even though it was not a commercial hit. After Born to Die was released, the band disbanded. It was the 10th album by Grand Funk Railroad. Frank Zappa persuaded the band to reunite and record a new album in 1976. One of the band's best studio albums named Good Singin' Good Playin' was the end result. Although it was not a monetary success, Frank Zappa expertly produced the album to capture the band's spirit. The killer track, Out To Get You, features a screaming guitar solo by Frank Zappa himself. Can You Do It, the album's lead hit, fell short of the Billboard Top 40. It was a shame because the song is fantastic. The second single from the album, Just Couldn't Wait, didn't even make the charts. Grand Funk Railroad finally broke up with the publication of the album Good Singing, Good Playing. Later, Farner and Brewer would record two additional Grand Funk albums without Craig Frost and Mel Shocker. Grand Funk Railroad's founding members came together for a single brief tour in 1996. Mark Farner left the group following the tour in order to continue concentrating on his solo career. Grand Funk was resurrected in 2000 by original members Mel Shocker and Don Brewer without Mark Farner for performance purposes and there are no studio albums or singles available. Grand Funk Railroad received votes for induction to the Michigan Rock and Roll Legends Hall of Fame in 2005. Following the cancer death of Shocker's wife, Dina, bassist Stanley Sheldon ex Peter Frampton took over for Shocker in 2018. Grand Funk Railroad was on the road a few years ago in 2019 when they began the American Band Tour 2019 and celebrating 50 years of funk tour. And in 2022, they were one of the opening acts for Kid Rock's Bad Reputation Tour.
And that's what happened to Grand Funk Railroad. Thank you for watching and like and subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know who should I do next on this channel. Who do you want me to see do a video on that I haven't already done? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.